great to be with you uh, on the second Sunday of the Epiphany season, and uh, I can't wait to just visit with you about the texts. All four of these lessons can be boiled down into pretty much one word. That word is called. In the Isaiah lesson that you listened to, he speaks of God calling him. He says, God knew me before I even came into the world. He named me. He gave me gifts, talents, skills. He equipped me for what I was to do. I'm called. Uh, in the psalm, uh, particularly if you read it from the Eugene Peterson translation, King David is celebrating the fact that God has called him. God has equipped him. God has made him able to do whatever work is before him. And I love one of the verses out of the Eugene Peterson translation. He's thanking God. God's pulled him out of, in this translation, it says the desolate pit. Eugene Peterson says out of the slimy muck and mire pit. Really a, a descriptive thing. But he's celebrating. He says, God, thank you for inviting me to the party for me. And then the epistle lesson, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, uh, Paul, I'm called to be a servant of Jesus Christ, equipped to do the work of the Lord. The gospel lesson, again, three callings we experience. The first is John the Baptist, called to be the forerunner of Christ, equipped to do what God had planned for him to do. And then the first disciple. Who's the first disciple? This is a good Bible trivia question. People want to say Peter. He's kind of the most famous. No. Nope. It's Andrew, his brother, who brings Peter along. And then uh, Jesus gives Peter, his actual name is Simon, he says, uh, I'm going to call you Peter, or the rock, uh, on which uh, the church will find its faith. So the lessons are, are connected in this theme of being called. Uh, I, I want to just invite you to uh, be caught up in the fact that we are all called to be a part of the kingdom of God. I want you to divorce your thinking uh, this morning from uh, being called to do something. Uh, that usually frightens people. Uh, the call that we're seeing today is the call to become. The call to enter in and live in relationship with God. That's the call I want to be talking with you about. You are called into fellowship with God in the person of Jesus Christ. I uh, had a fun little experience. I was watching one of the news programs uh, uh, this week, and uh, they had a cute little story about a teacher who had five or ten minutes at the end of her class to just do something with her kids before school was out. And here's what she had the kids do. They took their little pencils or crayons out, a piece of paper, and they were given this question. And these are second graders. Uh, how do people fall in love? Did any of you hear that or, or see that on TV? It was really cool. Did you see that? Is it, wasn't it cool? Uh, and the teacher collected all this stuff and came out with this profound stuff that comes out of uh, uh, second graders. There are three things to falling in love. Number one starts with staring. <laughs> Number two, it's getting closer. Am I doing good with that? You guys are I'm so glad you did. Number three, it's going on a date. And you know, I listened to that, it really caught me, and I thought, my gosh, these second graders have summarized 
uh, my near 43 year marriage. <laughs> and they made me look back to how it all started for Mark. Uh, it started when Barbie and I were staring at each other. And you might not know this, but it all happened in an Episcopal church on Highway 33 in St. Paul, Minnesota. We were both in Young Life Ministry. We both arrived late to the big leaders meeting. There were so many leaders that there were only two places to sit, and that was in a doorway with our backs up against the thresholds, and we had to stare at each other a little bit. Now, I, I'm going to tell you something really intimate. When it came to the prayer time, I caught Barbie peeking at me. <laughs> <clears throat> that meant I was peeking, too. <laughs> but this love relationship started with what? Staring. And then, uh, people don't believe this because I've had to outgrow this thing in my calling to be a pastor, but I, I was pretty shy early on. Uh, I wasn't a mover or a shaker. I, I, I didn't know how to hustle women. It's, uh, all that stuff just scared me, jabbers out of me. I remember in seminary praying, God, if, if you want me to have a wife, you better drop one out of the sky. I'm not a good hunter for this kind of stuff. And so I was so dumb that I didn't even ask what her name was. Sat in a doorway and never asked what her name was. I'd have been petrified to ask for a phone number. But here's what happened. One of our leaders who knew both of us said, Mark, do you know who you were sitting by? I said, no. Uh, well, I'll give you her name and phone number if you want it. Can you believe that? I've always wondered have something to do with me. <laughs> uh, thirdly, that, that, that was, you know, you got to try to get closer. Uh, I, re I remember uh, calling her up for that first day, and I paced up and down, and I was in a dormitory at the time, and there was one phone, and you had to sort of wait your turn, and this, it, it, it was just terrible. I was perspiring, whatever. Did call her up, and uh, she was with another guy at the time, and whatever the date was, she couldn't do it. But she let me down so nicely, <laughs> so gently, that I thought, you know, I, I dare to try that one again. So here's our first date, very memorable. Uh, St. Paul, Minnesota in January, 30 degrees below zero. <laughs> At the time, I drove a Corvair. <laughs> Very not dependable. The emergency brake was broken on it. To actually park the thing, it didn't have a park position in the transmission. I carried bricks with me. <laughs> and I always made sure I was on pretty much level. If I could get it just a little bit, I could open the door and slide a brick out. But what would happen in that cold weather is, when I was ready to leave, the brick would be frozen. <laughs> and one time her dad asked me, you know, every time you show up at our house, there's a brick that shows up. <laughs> at the seminary, they were building a building, so I had a great supply of bricks. <laughs> but halfway through this movie, and the movie was Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. But halfway through the movie, I scooted out to start the car up to make sure that it would start up after the movie. Uh, love starts with what? Staring, Staring getting closer, and, and then a date. I want to use those three little themes for you more completely experiencing the call. God extends to you and to everybody. Wasn't the pulpit hymn fun? Uh, it's about all the saints. You know, sometimes you get wrapped up. They say it was so incredible. God couldn't do anything with me. 
Look what he did with this day. King David, the same thing. The disciples, uh, the Apostle Paul. You know, we never feel in the league of those people. And so it's very easy for us to think, well, God calls these great ones, but not me. That's not true. God is calling each and every one of us into relationship with himself to be important people in the kingdom. I think going deeper into that begins when we do an epiphany activity called staring and gazing at Jesus. He was under the little star of Bethlehem, which has little twinkle lights, but as you walk through the epiphany season, he's going to become more and more illumined if you take time to gaze upon him, we'll go all the way to the transfiguration where he becomes so radiant, so bright that we can't even uh, look at him without uh, falling down and being blinded. But understanding the call that comes to us begins when we stare Jesus, thinking about Jesus. Secondly, uh, it, it's when we have a desire to get closer. Uh, I, I was just thinking about this uh, this week in preparation. Uh, there is no one in history that has had a greater impact on everything other than Jesus. Any other figure that has been great in history is, is minor compared to the influence that Jesus Christ has had in history. And do you know what that means? There is more written about Jesus than anybody else that's ever walked the face of the earth. There are more books about Jesus, more articles about Jesus, and this opportunity to become better acquainted, get closer to him is available to us. So we stare at him. In our prayers, we can get closer to Jesus. Participating in study times together, we can become closer to Jesus. And we hear more completely his call to each of us as people to be a part of his kingdom. And that's the time that we can begin to figure out what it is that we might be called to do. I was reminded at the men's study uh, that C.S. Lewis, the great writer, the British writer, uh, who wrote near Christianity, was at one time a non-believer. He was really rather antagonistic against believers. But he started studying about Jesus. And he wanted to find out if Jesus was a legend, a liar, a lunatic, or was he really Lord and God? And as he stared at Jesus, as he decided to get closer, he became a person of faith. And his writings have shaped and helped millions of people uh, in the life of faith. Uh, there's that last little bit that's so, so neat. It's setting up a date. Uh, you ever thought of dating Jesus before? That doesn't work. <laughs> too good, but we, we can set times uh, to be more focused. And as we're more focused, here's, here's what we're going to hear. I want you. I love you. I want you in my kingdom. In October, Barbie and I spent uh, a week in uh, Mexico. And uh, we always love getting off the regular tourist things. We were in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, but we got on a city bus that took us to a little town about 10 miles out. And uh, to get in the countryside, those bus rides are really something. There's animals on the bus. You, you, you wonder if you're gonna live through the experience. Uh, the mariachi guys jump on the bus and they don't have to pay as long as they play while you're going in the bus. It's really, really, really fun. And, uh, there's always somebody that will help you, but we came to this uh, little town, Machuca, and uh, there was a Catholic church there. And I went in, 
and uh, didn't know this before we went, but they had a very, very, very famous carving uh, that was in the front of their church. They brought in a giant tree, and an artist had carved the figure of Jesus. And it was uh, a figure that uh, you, you, you came to a place where you were transfixed. You, you couldn't just get up and walk out. And I sat there for quite some time. And it wasn't like a crucifix of Christ dying on the cross. It was that Christ simply had his arms extended. And as I looked at that, I thought, that's the call. Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come to me. Uh, be a part of my kingdom. Uh, you belong to me. I invite you to stare, get close and get some kind of uh, regular date with God. And you're doing a great job by being here on Sunday morning. Now, Father Brooks is going to share with us at, at our uh, metamorphosis time the date, his two-month date with Jesus as he was on sabbatical. And I just, uh, we'll all get a lot out of that. Uh, may God bless you as you hear his call for you to be in the with him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.